Today we've got a brand new winch to install, but first, underneath the engine bay is a bird's nest of wires from all the accessories we've fitted and haven't bothered tidying them up at the end. So today we're gonna tackle that and then fit the winch. This is an absolute disaster, and I know it. And, and every time I open the bonnet, I look at it and I go, I've got to fix that. The isolator's just hanging loose for the winch, which we're going to get rid of today anyway, because we're putting a new winch in. But um, the compressor, everything's just kind of thrown in here and it doesn't look real good. The last rock lights that we installed, it didn't have the right lugs, and instead of just waiting and doing it right, I've just sandwiched them in between two other terminals, which is crap, it's so bad. Anyway, being the springers, Got myself a couple of bus bars, positive and a negative, with the idea of mounting these away from the battery a bit and dragging um, two of the main cables back here from the battery and then using this as the distribution block instead of these terminals here. And that'll tidy the wires up a bit. I also when I, I also ordered off um, the internet from this mob called 70, 76 maybe it is, an isolator um, plate to hold the new winch isolator. Now it is supposed to go in there, but me being me, I didn't realize that my catch can come out so far. So I'm gonna find a new place for this. Maybe it'll be up here somewhere too, just to whack the isolator onto. Maybe I can get it in there. Anyway, I'll work that out later, but first things first, I'm gonna disconnect all the, all the cables and run them back here and see what sort of space we have and then start shortening them. I've got lugs and whatnot from, from Springer, so we'll put new lugs, I've got split tubing, I've got uh, some nice new electrical tape, we've got heat shrink, so we're gonna really make this look good, but more importantly, be safe and, and work better. So, time to start loosening all these off. Here we have all of the cables that we've managed to get off the main battery. So, uh, what I'm looking at now is, there's a few more bits and pieces to do, but I want to try and relocate these fuses, and there's a couple of relays in here as well. Um, but mostly, there's an accessory box that comes with the cruisers that is empty, um, and you can use it, obviously, for accessories. I'm probably not going to need it just now, because everything's running. I've got all the accessories in, I think. So I might try and see if I can take this out and that might allow me to put one of these bus bars in here. Now what's cool about these bus bars is obviously we've got the main terminals for the big lugs but for smaller lugs, and this is where I was battling with the other one, there's little tiny um, screws that I can actually put the smaller lugs onto as well. So it's going to work out real well for both. So I will just see if I can take this accessory box off and then we'll see where the bus bars will go. With all the wires out of the way, I managed to get that accessory box off. The next thing I want to do is work out where I want to put these two bus bars. Um, there is some, some tapped holes in the side of the cruise already, so I might see if I can reuse a couple of these. I'd really like it if these were both kind of here and here and I could just get the wire straight into or the cable straight into it from here and I could lose a lot of length off the cables and voltage drop, weight, all that sort of stuff, cleanliness. It's gonna be heaps better. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Just need to work out what I can run from the battery to here in a neat way and where they'll go and yeah, just uh, connect them all up. Could be quite easy, maybe. <laughs> Doesn't normally work out this way, but let's see where these will mount. Two bus bars are in. This one, I haven't got a secondary uh, spot. I don't want to really tack screw through the far or through the side of the, the cruiser. So, it is pretty solid, I've really reefed this one pretty tightly, so I'm hoping time we get all the cables on, it'll probably firm itself up and I might just run a cable tie around it if I have to, but I'm thinking that'll be okay. This one's rock solid, the positive's rock solid. So I guess what, um, what my next step is, is all these cables here, they're all hugely long, so I'm gonna start cutting these back and attaching them to the bus bar, making it a lot neater. And then at the end of it, I'll run, I'll run two brand new 
heavy duty um, cables from, from each terminal of the battery into each bus bar. And that will be this end eaten up and then we can get started on the winch. So I'm gonna put you back on a time lapse while I shorten all these cables up. Job is done. So I ended up, I had to duck up the super cheap auto and get this last um, negative cable. I was able to find a positive one. So what I've done, I've run obviously negative to the negative bus bar, positive to the positive bus bar, and then connected all the existing terminals back in, shortened all the cables, neatened everything up. So super happy with the result. And now I've got a bit of uh, uh, redundancy too because if I have any more accessories I can just plug them straight into these bus bars you don't have to go near the battery and it's a lot neater there is a bit of a cabling here still but the injector um, connections are all underneath here and really there's a bit going on in here anyway so to have just one loom there in my book that's pretty okay so the battery now is reasonably clean and empty and neat which is good i haven't put the the positive plastic shroud back over this because i don't see the need for it now um the only thing i've got to do now we're going to fit the new winch the new um, carbon pro uh the scout winch so there will be two more cables coming into this for the winch and apart from that though and the isolator i've managed to uh secure that in here i'll show you that when we're doing the the winch install which we'll do tomorrow but this will all be in the same video but it is, uh, it's done for today. So with that, let's go to tomorrow. And it is the next day. So first thing this morning, we're gonna get the old winch out, which is a carbon winch too. And we'll go through the new one in a minute. We'll unbox it and do all that sort of stuff. Um, but let's get this winch out first. So with the old winch out, time to put the new winch in. This is a Scout Pro from Carbon Winch. We picked this up at the Brizzy 4 Before Show about two or three weeks ago, along with a recovery kit. Now retail, I think these are about 1350 from memory and these are about 399. We did get a show special and Baz bought exactly the same kit. So we got it for a bit less, but it was at the show. So I thought I'd do a quick unboxing on these two and show you what we got. So first of all, the recovery kit, clear top bag, fairly solid bag by the look of it. Set of gloves, always handy. A new hitch, which will fit. Obviously these soft shackles, which are pretty cool. And um, we got a couple of soft shackles there for one for each end of that. We got a snatch strap for the look of it and a tree trunk protector. Also a normal shackle and a nice um, recovery ring. So to do double line pulls with to double the strength of the winch. So we got all that. So that is a pretty cool recovery kit that will fit in the trundle drawer and go with me pretty much everywhere. Now, down to the winch. Why did I buy a carbon winch? As you've just seen, the one I've just taken out is a carbon winch. I've had it for probably at least five years old. That's the third car it's in, in the cruiser. So it's certainly not, not been a lazy winch. It's done a lot of work. The one that was in there was a 12,000 pound winch and um, has lasted me really, really well. The only reason I'm changing it is it is starting to fail it the boys at carbon said at the show 150 bucks they'll refurb it totally so we're going to do that and we're hopefully going to put it on the back of Andy's car as a rear winch without further ado let's have a look at this what is in this let's see what they've got right instructions we will get that and a sticker which we will definitely use let's have a look inside here what I do like about the carbon winch is Obviously they come with a, a wireless remote from the box. Hang on, this is heavy. Let me get this out. So here's the winch, the Scout Pro with the black cable, black rope, I should say. Chrome handle, so mine was a black handle. All right, let's see what's in these. Control box and all the cabling and the wireless control is there too. Very similar to the one that I already have and a wired controller too because if that runs out of batteries you're a bit stuffed and a key ring look at that what else has we got in here so in here most importantly a stubby cooler will be well used 
bit of coral, the main earth to the battery. Um, that goes on the hook normally on the front. Now I have read about these, so these are, these are to go on to the, when you spool the wheel out, the protector off it at the, at the very start of it. On the old one, it was uh, permanently attached to the front of the, of the rope. Um, this one, I think you can take it on and off a bit easier. It's a nice big long and it's, I guess it's full of Velcro. Yeah, so we just put that around the, the, uh, the rope when we get it, pull it out. So we get, we get a choice of two, a, a nice Larry one or a, or a black one. No one may, it'll be Larry. Fair lead, nice new carbon one, and a few nuts and bolts. Put it all together with. This will be the hook. And what's in this last box it is, ah, oh, the isolator. Who could forget about the isolator? So you will see when I did the tidy up of the uh, the engine bay yesterday, I did have a, that 76 new isolator plate, which I have managed to MacGyver into a new spot. And this hopefully will fit straight on it. So we'll have a proper winch isolator, not just hanging around in the engine bay on a cable tie. All right, so that is the unboxing done. So let's get into putting it into the car. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is mount the winch to the Toyota plate. So this is the way it sits on the front of the car. This is the top. The winch will basically wanna sit like that. So that being said, if we flip that over, that should be right. So these winches all come with square bolts that just slide in so you don't have to worry about holding the top of the, the nut while you put the bolt in. That's what she said. <laughs> so let's set that on. And I'm gonna use a couple of spring washers just to make sure that it's gonna tighten up nicely. Good start, real good start. And I've lost a spring washer. This is possibly one of the handiest things, but as long as these, yes, yes. I might be able to use that. It's probably a better idea. So I would never just ugga dugga straight into it. I want to definitely just make sure that everything's not cross threaded first. All right, I'm reasonably confident that none of those are cross threaded. Two ugga duggers is about spec, I'd say. All right, winch is mounted. So what I've decided to do, I test fit at the winch up under here and it didn't quite, it just was gonna hit underneath the bull bar a bit. So I'm gonna put the control box on top here. I've just got this pliers out because I'll measure when that's level. It'll be something like that. So I'm just gonna drill a couple of holes in the bull bar here to mount this bracket. And then the, all the cables will sneak down through that existing hole that's already there. So it'll be nice and neat. So that's where I'm gonna mount the control box. I'll go and get a couple of holes drilled, mount that up, and then we'll work on getting the winch mounted. So one thing I always like to do is um, with this, so all of these cables here, uh, they'll all need Coro on them, just so when they're in the truck, they don't rub and create a short. So I'm just gonna put uh, spit tubing on all of these, and then we'll install it onto the car. Now I will just sneak this control box in through. So that this reset, this hole was already here, so it's gonna work out really well. Beautiful. All right, let's put this in. In case you were wondering, Ando has made an appearance. So the next thing we wanna do is get this isolator on. Um, so I got this bracket, as I said, I've had to bend it a bit to make it fit into where I want it to go. So what I'm gonna do is, um, there is a couple of profiles here where we could snap uh, the side out so the cable can go in. So I'm gonna do one at the side and one at the front, and then that's gonna sit in here. That's gonna go under our 
positive and then this one is the fade that's going down to the winch so that will isolate the winch we'll only turn it on when we're actually using it so obviously off and on so i'm going to get this all uh, made up and put in and then we'll get the grips with fitting the winch <laughs> So last thing to do is the carbon winch hook. Done. Now we shall just turn it on and make sure it works. So let's unisolate it. So far so good. So with these two switches, uh, you press both down and that turns it on. And then this should just go in. And it does. So that's all the winch done. We ended up putting the control box up here with, uh, we can plug the remote in there when we need to if we ever run out of batteries in this. Then we've put the isolator up in here. Uh, that's from that 76 mode. We, we managed to MacGyver it to go in there so we can just turn it off at any time. And then our two cables are coming up into the battery and everything else is neat. So that was this weekend's episode done so we've tidied up all the engine bay fitted the new winch and yeah i just have to put the grill back together and that is it so thank you very much for watching please do remember to subscribe we'll see you in the next one